Hello everyone, this is Dragothian here. Welcome to another Rise of Kingdoms video. Today we are going to be talking about Pakal. We're going to be doing a mastery series on him. We're going to go over his skills. We're going to go over his talents. We're going to go over his pairings. And we're going to summarize what he should be used for in the field. I do have a very interesting pairing that I haven't really seen around, but I have used and tested. And it's not bad, it's not great, it's not bad, but I do want to give that pairing to you as well, so make sure that you stay tuned, we get into this mastery guide, and watch till the very end. I'll see you guys on the other side. Alright, so here we go. We have Kitnich, Janab, Pakal, or Pakal. So, Pakal is one of those guys who really, when you're thinking about it, He's kind of one-sided, I'm not going to lie. But at the same time, that one side is really, really good for particular scenarios. Now, we all know, and it's something that I want to do a video on just to kind of showcase and highlight it, but I've talked about it on multiple videos. The meta right now is not really a meta anymore. It's a situational pairing versus pairing setup now when it comes to rallies and garrisons. You've got some garrisons that absolutely devastate particular rallies while also getting decimated by other types of rallies. There are some garrison uh, pairs that are better than others, but can be beaten by a certain pair. So with this being said, Pakal is one of those commanders that is part of a pair of rally leaders that do one of the best reports you'll get against certain garrison commanders and then okay against some and then get absolutely wrecked against others. We'll go over that, but let's first go over the skills so we know why the wrecking or the getting wrecked happens in the first place. So first off, we have balance strategy. Number one skill, deals skill damage to the current target, 1300 damage factor, which is kind of, in my opinion, a little subpar for a legendary commander, especially a late season legendary commander, but I digress. And troops led by this commander gain a shield of 500 damage factor for three seconds, which can absorb a large amount of damage. 500 damage factor, by comparison, for instance, we have Charles here. His is 1,200 damage factor. Really not that much if we're thinking about it. Okay, so Pakal's 500 damage factor shield, while it is nice, it, it's a little bit of a damage reduction. It's not game-changing. It's not game-breaking. But that's also why they probably lowered the damage factor, was to also account for the fact that you get a shield with the same skill. I would much rather have more damage factor. So pump that up to 1,700 damage factor. Get rid of the shield. Who cares? Let's move on. Unfortunately, you can't do that. Uh, so that's what we've got. But I like the hybrid too. We've got some offense. we got some defense. Not bad at all. So that's your first skill from uh, Pakal, which is balanced strategy. Second skill, ruler of Palenque. Infantry units led by this commander gain 30% increased health. That lends fantastically to what this commander does. And a 15% march speed bonus, which is not that big of a deal for what this commander does but can be used in open field, which is nice. When his commander launches a rally attack, ooh, now we're talking, all damage dealt is increased by 5%. That's a fantastic part of this skill and one you want to have maxed. Third skill, when attacking strongholds or cities. So again, this is a rally or, I mean, technically you can attack a city or a stronghold as an open field march. Wouldn't necessarily recommend it, but you can do it. You can certainly do it, uh, especially if you're a high power player and you're, you know, swarming a city that's loaded with resources, something like that. Uh, infantry led by this commander gains 40% increased attack. When attacked, troops also have a 20% chance of dispelling any current active, slow, poison, exhaust, and other weakening effects. Normal debuffs weaken the target troops by reducing their attack, defense, or health, or things like weakening their healing effects. So again, Alex's healing effect debuff, Saladin's healing effect debuff, anything that reduces attack, like uh, Attila's primary, like, um, double C's primary, like all these other skills that reduce attack, reduce defense, reduce health, you will dispel them with this third skill. Possibly troops have a 20% chance of dispelling any currently active debuff. This skill can trigger once every 10 seconds. This is the problem. This skill can trigger once every 10 seconds. It might not line up. It might not line up. You might have the debuff for five seconds and you're on a, a 10 second cooldown timer and you're not going to get any of the benefit of that part of the skill. Just got to say. And again, if it's a third skill, and if that's all you get is the attack bonus for KBK, that's not that big of a deal. You get tons of attack bonus anyway. 
The third skill is one of the weakest skills here. And again, if you're going for open field, this can be a level one skill and you'll be just fine uh, because none of it will apply. So number four, Holy Tree's Blessing reduces all damage taken by 10%. Love that. Anytime I see all damage taken reduced or all damage taken bonus, I get excited. While on the map, so this is for rallies, this is for open field, all that good stuff, reduces all damage taken when surrounded. Bonus reduction equals number of surrounding enemies times 5% at max. So again, if you're surrounded by six, which is the upper limit here, you can have a maximum of six factor into this. That's an additional 30% damage reduction bonus on top of the 10% you're already getting. That's 40%, guys. That's amazing. That's a 40% damage reduction. Now, obviously, obviously, right? You're going to be taking more damage because you're surrounded. You're getting hit, right? If you get lucky, though, and you have a bunch of players who are hitting you with, you know, uh, Boudicca's and Lohar's and stuff like that, you're going to be in really good shape because your damage is going to be way down when it comes to what you're taking and your actual damage is going to go way up that you're outputting. Troops led by this commander deal 20% increased counterattack damage and take 5% less damage from all sources for three seconds after using an active skill. This effect can trigger at most once every five seconds. So again, this will not happen on the second cast. So if you have Pakal primary, it's not going to happen on the second cast because the second cast of your secondary commander takes two seconds. So you're going to trigger it once. It's going to skip the next cast and it's going to come back around to Pakal again. You're going to trigger it again. Skip the next cast, etc., etc., etc. Okay, so you're going to get one every skill cycle. This is how that works. That's the expertise. So again, all these things together tell a story. We're reducing a ton of damage. If you're swarmed, we're reducing even more damage. We're giving you some decent firepower with a skill damage factor of 1300, but not game breaking, not game changing. We're giving you a load of health as well, which is very, very strong. And the third skill that is the rally skill, while it is nice, it is very situational and it's not exactly reliable. So again, you may be getting tons of debuffs that just don't get wiped because the 20% chance didn't fire off or it did fire off and then it has a 10 second cooldown timer and then you get all these debuffs on top of that afterwards. So that's going to be a problem for Pakal to worry about when you're thinking about using him on the battlefield in rise of kingdoms all right so that's the skills and again i like the skills overall it's telling a very very unique story and that story is this guy's a rallier he's meant to do one thing and that's to rally structures not so much cities you can but i don't really like rallying cities with him um he does do more than say a um a guan herald or an archer rally or a cav rally when it comes to severely wounded because he is infantry based but it's very minimal until it's Kata will always be the king there when it comes to uh, causing maximum uh, severely wounded let's look at a talent build that i use for rallies this is on my discord as well guys if you haven't gone below make sure you go and uh, sign up for that discord it's completely free this build is also on there for you ready and waiting along with all the other builds that you might want to have inside of Rise of Kingdoms for your commanders. Also, want to thank Al Reyes for becoming the most recent member of the channel as well. As you can see right below me here, oh, he's right there. I want to highlight that. And this is the talent uh, build for Pakal that I use. Now, why do we have Desperate Elegy? This is a big question I get asked all the time. Well, this triggers during rallies almost immediately. When troops led by this commander are reduced to 30% of units remaining, they gain an extra 25 rage from each normal attack. This is huge. This basically puts you at the rage cap each skill cycle alongside of using Undying Fury, Burning Blood. That, in combination with everything else, you're going to be at the rage cap pretty much consistently because this triggers at basically the first skill cycle. Once you, once you tap that target, your march is going to be very close to 30% almost instantly, and you're going to be hitting over and over and over and this does not go away this as long as your rally is up even if it's reinforced you will still be getting the benefits of desperate elegy i know it makes no sense but in the reports you will see desperate elegy trigger triggering almost immediately once you hit that rap with that rally on whatever target you're trying to hit we also went heavy into skill damage reduction loose formation here for nine percent very strong we have a nice another heal after using a skill heals a portion of slightly wounded units that's very helpful testudo formation causing some more tankiness for us normal troop attacks have a 10 percent chance of reducing all damage taken by 15 percent 
during the next one second. Combine that with hold the line when the army led by this commander contains only infantry units, which is exactly the way it should be. Gives a troop chance 10% uh, chance to reduce damage taken by 20% for the next two seconds after being attacked. And this all stacks up, guys. So if these both fire at the same time, it's a 30% damage reduction. Also, you have another 40% possible damage reduction if you're getting swarmed. 10% uh, base on the fourth skill. You can't complain about that. There's tons of damage reduction here going on. You also have, if you are and you should, be using this against a cavalry-based garrison. There's a damage modifier of 6% to all cavalry units. I did, you can go to 9 if you want to drop this defensive point here. And in fact, I feel like that may be the case. But if you're consistently just rallying Zenobia, this isn't even necessary. You can actually dodge this all together and maybe possibly go into balance. I'm not a huge fan of balance, but you can possibly do it. Also, you can drop a couple things here and there. You would lose some health points and some defense points. But you could possibly go into buckler shield and gain counterattack damage taken by up to 9%. That's a very good one to have too, as it's always on. You get that benefit from every turn because counterattack damage is a normal white damage number, not a red damage number. So you get that benefit every second. But again, I do like the extra stats here. 6% health. This is one of the most valuable buffs in the game, talent wise, when it comes to st statistics. You get three points for six stat points. Most often, you're running into one point per half stat point, or again, in a um, specific troop type tree you'll get one to one so um this one right here for instance increases health by one percent with one point so that's what you're going to get but um the the strong of body one here this is the most uh valuable value laden i guess talent in the game because of uh stat wise because of the fact that you get two for one and that's it you're increasing your normal attack damage with double headed axe here too call the pack once you're reduced to 50 percent strength against again this triggers fairly quickly um, you'll get a 6% defense bonus as well for all your troops. Some some generic random uh, reducing damage taken right here, as well as some counterattack damage dealt increasing by 1.5%. Also, I love Master Armor when troops level as commander enter battle. Increases defense by 1.5 times the commander star level. That's 6 stars for sure, so you're looking at 9% defense right off the bat. Hot damn, that's very nice. Okay, so I went over all the main talent points there, and I think this is pretty self-explanatory. Some people like to go to Entrenched and things like that. I've just never gotten good reports against high-level players that have good gear with the Entrenched pool here. And we have a new subscriber, Mr. Mac 45 Welcome to the channel. So again, we've got that right here. That is our talent build. Now, what are we talking about pairings? First off, before we talk about pairings, let's talk about roles. So... His main role is Rallier, and when you're talking about Rallier, what should you rally and what should you not rally with Pakal? Well, first off, you should not rally um, a mandatory Artemisia with Pakal. Don't do it. You're going to get absolutely devastated. It's just, it's going to be a nightmare. It's going to be a wreck. Train wreck of epic proportions. Just don't do it, okay? You can rally Zenobia with it if you've got top tier gear, okay? Top tier gear. Something like this, I'd prefer actually to have a little more on the uh, the set here, the set bonus, the infantry attack is not bad to have, but I will say getting the two piece for sure is a must have for that 3% 3, 3 troop defense. You can go heavier into health if you want to taking off eternal night and getting a proct, um, is it gladiator? No, proc Kerox humility, uh, on this commander as well. You can go heavy into a shield, possibly a 25%. Um, if you proc, or, yeah, 25% if you proc it, um, infantry attack shield and then that would free up your glove slot which you could possibly go into maybe the specific um the specific infantry gloves that you can get here as well but i like this combo here it's very inexpensive to get set up with the helmet and the gloves being the eternal empire set use your gatekeeper shield that's propped and again if you don't have an eternal knight you can certainly go ahead and pop in that Kerouac's humility here and get that nice um that nice set here so this is what i'm talking about where's that Where's that? Where's that? There it is. Hero Axe Humility, 8% infantry health. When proc like this one is, you're looking at 10% uh, health, which is nice. This is 12% infantry defense. I always like to go for the higher stats. So that's why I've got this one here. Accessory wise, you definitely want to have a horn or again, you can go for multiple different um, damage modifiers. So right now I've got the Vengeance as my second one. You could even go Greatest Glory here if you wanted to and have double normal and counterattack damage bonuses on top of all this stuff. 
that the white number from that pairing is insane when you're hitting a structure very very strong you could also go dagger you could also go moras you could also just again have that horn and again if you have a procced uh infantry horn it's not bad to have at all uh ring here also would work just fine although again you're not really doing big bonus beefy damage with Pakal, it's that slow sustained with some with some augmented skill damage. So I really don't think, honestly, Ring would be my last choice. I would go Vengeance, Greatest Glory, Horn, Dagger, Moras over the Ring for Pakal. Now pairings, the reason we want to do that, right? So pairings, we're going to go over and look at Harold. Harold is our best bet when it comes to his pairing. This is your tried and true rally pair. Pakal primary, Harold secondary. The reason being, again, all these things procking off during the skill cycle weight is going to help you boost your damage and also the counterattack synergy. Look at this. Counterattack damage dealt on the map while rallying and on the map is increased by 20%. If surrounded, again, remember we have that surrounded bonus from Pakal as well. Counterattack damage dealt will be increased further. Bonus damage equals number of surrounding enemies times 2% with an upper limit of 10. So this could be an, another 20% counterattack damage bonus pretty strong if you get swarmed and again you need to worry about that if you don't have the open field when you're rallying and you've got call and you've got Harold there they can be swarmed but with this pairing you're going to cause them some severe damage this is Attila Takeda numbers guys when you have Pakal and Harold together with proper infantry gear on Pakal you will do Attila Takeda severely wounded damage to anybody swarming there will be dead there will be blood all that good stuff so rally wise, this is your best rally. There's no there's no reason to even talk about any other commander to go with Pakal in a rally situation. This is the best. It's been tested. It's been tried. It's been true. It's done. Open field. You can use Pakal Herald as well for the very same reason that you're using him for rallies. But again, we're talking about two rally commanders here, guys. So again, there's two skills, one on each one of these that do not work on the open field because they are specifically for attacking strongholds and cities so you're losing quite a bit of stuff okay now for pakal it's not that bad but for harold you actually do lose quite a bit the, the damage reduction taken is very strong here attack bonus of 10 percent, not that big of a deal okay so open field wise that's that i would also say my pairing that i hinted at at the very beginning of the video i like guan i like guan primary with pakal secondary now, why is that? Okay, so we use we use Guan Leo, right, a lot, or Guan Alex if you don't have Leo. And the reason we do that is to, to provide a little more tankiness, right? A little more tankiness for Guan so he can stay alive longer, so he can be firing off the skill, uh, skill damage uh, from his primary AoE and silencing everything around him. That's the point, right? That's the point. Um, I will say that's, you know, main reason why I use Guan anyway. Pakal kind of gives you that extra bonus, that, that extra uh, tankiness. So again, you have a shield, 500. This will not trigger... Remember, this will not trigger Guan's expertise. It's not quick enough, okay? It's not for triggering Guan's expertise. It's just for providing more tankiness. Again, with the second skill here, adding more damage to rallies. If you're doing that, you can do it, but it's not as good as Herald. Again, the health bonus, more tankiness. Infantry march speed, more speed equals more survivability, okay? Third skill is the rally skill. Fourth skill, reducing all damage taken by 10%. More tankiness for Guan, okay? If you're swarmed, more tankiness for Guan. And people love to swarm Guan. That's what I do. As soon as I see a Guan, I'm like, oh, swarm it. Because he's not tanky and he does a lot of damage and he silences all of our stuff. Let's get him down. He's a top priority target. Well, with this, having Pakal as a secondary, you get that bonus. You get that six, uh, up up to six times 5%. So that's 30% damage reduction plus the 10% base that you already get. Plus, again, with his expertise, troops level as commander deal 20% increased attack counterattack damage and take 5% less damage from all sources for three seconds after using a skill. And again, cool thing is with Guan, he's a skill damage commander. And if you have a horn on him, and if you have a bunch of other rage generating talents, he's going to be firing his skills off basically every five to six seconds, which means you're going to have this up 50% of the time. That is very, very strong. So very, very strong. You have the feral talent build that I have on my discord. Again, throw yourself over there and go get that build if you want to. Um, this will basically keep this up almost 50% of the time. And uh, that's very, very strong. Very, very strong on the battlefield. This will help Guan be more survivable. Will he be uh, you know, immune? No, of course not. He's not. But this is going to be better than maybe an Alex or even a Leo, in my opinion, because you're going to do more damage with this guy with 
the counterattack damage bonuses. You get the health bonus, which Leo was supposed to provide you. And again, you've got the skill damage of 1300 here with a shield as well, which is not random and it's not required to be half health. Whereas Leo, again, when you look at Leo and why people liked him so much, you have the health bonus of 30%. You get a 600 damage factor AOE. Okay, so it's AOE. But again, the second skill here, defense bonus of 30%. That's not bad. 50% rage has kind of been broken slash not broken. 50% of units remaining needed to have the shield. It's an 800 damage factor shield, which is a little bit better than Pakal, but you have to be half health for this to be working. And again, an open field, you don't really tend to want to be out there by yourself, half health and not refresh your march and get back up to snuff. So to me, Guan Yu and Pakal, if you're not using Pakal Herald is the play here. If you don't have Herald max and you do have Guan at least five one five five okay so that's that so let's summarize again what is pakal here for why are you using pakal why do you want to max pakal well really it's for rallies you don't you're not getting pakal for open field there's way better options for open field especially for infantry and then if you're if you're opening it up to all the troop types we've already talked about it at length here archers are king right so what are you using pakal for well you're rallying your Jadwiga YSS, your Jadwiga Saladin, your Saladin YSSs, all those are, uh, Cav Commander garrisons, this is your uh, rally. Bacall Herald is your rally. It will take down and get positive results against those marches. Now, you can rally with Zeno uh, against Zenobia with this pairing. It does work, but you really need to have the equipment advantage. If you don't have the proper equipment and you're rallying a properly equipped Zenobia YSS, you will still get wrecked with Pakal Herald. It's no joke. It's infantry versus infantry, but it doesn't matter. So nobody YSS is that good. So it depends on what you're rallying as to which rally you should be using this for. To me, if you're still seeing a lot of Zenobias, you want to be bringing out that Gilgamesh Nebu. Okay. You want to be bringing out that, um, that, that basically that March. I mean, you could do Ramses Gilgamesh, but it's not as good as, as Gilgamesh Nebu. Okay. So Pakal, in my opinion, really your main purpose rallying those garrisons that are cavalry based you can do it with against zenobia but again you need to have the equipment advantage otherwise you'll get even at best even trades at best but possibly a lot worse trades if they have the advantage over you on the equipment so that's a big deal it's a very big deal also if you have a shit talent build not using what i just showed you earlier that will also not help so um with that being said i hope you enjoyed i hope this has been helpful for you guys i hope you got everything you need to go ahead and use Pakal effectively in the open field, and especially in your rally situations in your KVK. Hopefully you're winning. Cheers, have a good one, and take care.